Hello, hello, everyone. Havilam TV. I am thrilled, honored, and just so excited to have it. My first of all, my first video uh, interview. So thank you very much. I have Emma Medeiros here, and uh, she and I met actually at the uh, District of Curves fashion show, which was so awesome, and the video for that is coming soon. So, hey, Emma, how are you? I'm doing great. How's it going with you? Oh, man, I am great. I am great. As well. How are you doing? I'm doing fabulous. The weather here in mm -hmm. Boston is gorgeous. Good, good. I'm also really excited. I'm getting ready for Full Figured Fashion Week, which is next week. That's starting oh, yeah, New York. Okay, good. So we'll talk about that. So I'm excited about that. So, as you can probably hear, um, um, Emma's in the uh, uh, full-figured uh, industry. Mm -hmm. So, Emma, why don't you just uh, tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. So, I own Medeiros Fashion PR, which is the first public relations firm in the U.S. to specialize in the plus-size fashion industry. Okay. And I started it a few years ago when I realized that there wasn't one already, which was actually very surprising to me mm -hmm. because the size fashion industry has been exploding mm -hmm. over the last few years and no end in sight. You know, we're not going away. Um, <laughs> I got my degree from Emerson College here in Boston. I was like, okay, do I want to have my own firm? Do I want to work for someone else? You know, kind of what do I want to be when I grow up sort of thing. Mm -hmm. okay. And I was like, well, let me work for someone else. You know, I'll make my mistakes on their watch. And, you know, after a few years, I'll start my own firm. Uh -huh. so I assumed that because the industry was just exploding so much, I would have my pick of firms to work for that specialized in the plus size industry. Uh -huh. So I started doing research and I could not find a single one. Wow. in the U.S. that specialized in it. Now, there are many fashion PR firms, of course, that may or may not have a couple of plus-size clients, but there was nobody that specialized They're in specialized it. Specialized in it. Okay. And the reason why that's important is because all of my clients know that every single one of my media connections, all my resources, all my connections, everything I have is relevant to them. Okay. So I'm not going to waste a single moment of my time or a dime of their money reaching out to people that are not interested. And so, uh, PR, what's involved in, well, let's start with just fashion PR. Sure. Well, actually, before I do that, I'd like to talk exactly what PR is, because mm -hmm. not everyone knows what public relations is. Yeah. A lot of people say, oh, it's advertising. So, uh -huh. advertising, so, right? So, it is different than advertising. So, what PR is, is that it gets you more well-known, because uh -huh. no matter how amazing you are, if no one knows about you, you're not going to be successful. And that's true whether you are a model, a designer, a plumber, whatever you do, that's <laughs> true, right? Yeah. So <clears throat> how PR approaches it is that it's based on merit, not money. So what I mean by that is the average person knows that when they see an ad, whether it's a, in a magazine, on a billboard, whatever, it is a paid ad. Okay. So whether or not your product is any good or service, whatever, you, if you have the money, you can buy that ad, right? Okay. So versus PR, public relations, what I do, yes, you pay me for my services, but I'm reaching out to journalists, to bloggers, or whatever, that they're not paid to write about you. It's a great story, not about you. So if they do anyway, it means a lot more in the public mind. It's actually called third-party credibility. Okay. okay. Um, it's almost like getting a recommendation for a restaurant, a movie, whatever, from a friend. Okay. So you see a commercial for a new restaurant in your area, right? So it kind of gets the, the wheels turning like, hmm, I might want to check that out. But if your friend who's not paid by the restaurant that we know of, <laughs> restaurant, right? You never know. Um, but if your friend says, oh my gosh, you've got to go there. They have the best food and the best service. You're mm -hmm. going there the next night because that's yeah. somebody who's not paid to endorse it and because they are anyway it means a lot more okay. that's just kind of a little quick overview of you know what PR, how pr is different than advertising yes guinevere i know you want to be part of the camera yes oh you do. do we have an what are you doing her in our interview she'll be up here before long so guinevere <laughs> does about our assistants well, well in the meantime so we um we got into we met each other at the fashion show. So, could you just uh, you know just tell our viewers what would you do at a at a fashion show before we get back to yeah absolutely 
Um, and I so, thought, what were you doing when uh, when we met? <laughs> well, I mean, a big part of what I was doing at the fashion show was before the fashion show. Mm -hmm. So, in District of Curves' case, they hired me to get them um, more well known in the. Pro I mean, they've been around for a while, but to get more press at the show, okay. reach out to get interviews both before mm -hmm. and after the show get more attendance at the show. So again, it's all about exposure. So in that respect, you know, that's something that a designer or whatever would do. And then I have models, you know, I have all kinds of clients. Designers. So depending on what you do, mm -hmm. I would give different services. And of course, depending on your goal. Okay, well, and it yeah. worked because uh, I ended up going. Oh, yes. No, we got quite a bit of <laughs> I hadn't heard of it or seen it before. And then I saw it and I was like, this is something that I want yes. to be very interested in. And then we met in person. So, yes, yes um, it was so fun. a testimonial time. It works. Thank you. Yes. I think, I mean, you know, there's no guarantee, you know, my clients always want to know, okay, so how many magazines can you get me in and how many of this? And, that? Mm -hmm. and the thing is, there is no guarantee because it's not paid. Mm -hmm. Again, with advertising, you can pay it, but still doesn't mean you're going to get sales. Keep in mind from the ad, um, but you will get that placement of the ad. But again, PR, I think is more about building your reputation and your credibility. And okay. yes, okay and everything um, but you do want to work on the long term you have to think long term mm -hmm. you know it's really important to build that credibility and that trust with your customers because that is truly what is going to get you, um, make you successful in the long run not just immediate sales and immediate okay. so Emma why do you think um, coming heading back to the beginning of our conversation there are many 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 plus size full-figured women and men in the in the u.s why is it that there's just a dearth of uh pr and just fashion or attention paid in general where you were I, able to start yeah, getting, better. Avoid? getting better um i think it was last year that you know i forget who did this study but it was a very thorough, you know legitimate study that so even though 67 percent of people in the u.s both women and men mm -hmm. are concerned plus size only two percent of the media covered. Wow, isn't that insane? That is so that is starting to sad. change. <laughs> There's no other word for it, right? And I mean, thankfully, the mainstream media is finally realizing that women have curves as well. So the thing is, it's not just about Plus Model Magazine, the curvy fashionista, which I love mm -hmm. them obviously, but it's now surprisingly getting into Vogue, into Glamour, into Harper's Bazaar. It's like, that is unheard of mm -hmm. even years ago. So I'm very grateful for that because that's getting much more exposure because they've been around for longer. Mm -hmm. It's almost like, okay, they're finally saying that plus sizes are like real. Yes. You know, yes. once, oh, you're in Vogue, you must be legitimate. You must be <laughs> <laughs> and so one of the questions that I got uh, from my uh, my Twitter support group, hey guys, thank you so much, um, was how do you overcome the barriers in um, promoting and, and doing what you need to do and promoting uh, and doing the PR for, for your huh. clients? You know, how do you overcome that? Well, a big part of what makes us successful is knowing how to get to the heart of what makes a client different. Mm -hmm. And there's actually a little story behind that. One of my professors, when I was in college, he told us a story of when he was job hunting um, many years ago for whatever job it was. Mm -hmm. He did an interview prepared to answer what are your strengths, weaknesses, you know, typical interview questions that we mm -hmm. all are. And then instead, this guy sits him down and he goes, so, what makes you so effing special? <laughs> okay. And he didn't censor, by the way. I'm being nice. <laughs> so my professor was like, uh, 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 yeah, I mean, tongue-tied. What do you say to that? Yeah. So the guy says, okay, thank you very much. You can leave now. Goodbye. <laughs> End of interview. I mean, talk about brutal. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, that story just resonates with me and I'm so glad I heard that because at the end of the day mm -hmm. what however people phrase it that is what they want to know exactly. what makes effing special why am I buying your clothes why am I hiring you as a model however they phrase it that's what they want to know so yeah. knowing that 
I make sure that I get to the heart of my clients, whether you're a designer, a mom, or whatever, I can say to the journalist, this is why you need to cover her. Not just this big, long, drawn out, okay, body positivity, which is important, mm-hmm. but it's overused now. So yeah. you get to the heart of the matter. Why? Why am I hiring you? Why am I writing about you? Why am I featuring you? So mm-hmm. knowing that, having that experience, I know now how to get to the nub of what makes people different. Okay. One of, you know, one of my favorite quotes from Coco Chanel is, in order to be irreplaceable, one must mm-hmm. always be different. Oh, okay. okay. And so when, what do you look for? Another popular question I got was, well, well, first, before we continue, let's let's drop your uh, contact information and your social media. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, so, yep, so absolutely. So, MedeirosFashionPR.com. Mm-hmm. So, it's Liz and Mary, E, D as in dog, E, I, R, O, S as in Sam. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, I don't have to spell the word fashion. Um, <laughs> so, again, MedeirosFashionPR.com. So all of my links are there, email, everything. Mm-hmm. And of course, I have Instagram, Facebook. Um, so you can find, find me Medeiros Fashion PR on all of them. And so you're, you're based in Boston. So let's just say. I am, yeah, I am based in Boston right now. I mean, I have contacts all over. Uh-huh. That was my next question. So yeah, let's just say um, I want to get in contact with you. And I, I mean, I have contact all over. I have, all over. Mm-hmm. I have, you know, there's really no limit of what I can do. I mean, yes, okay. I try to go to physically go to as many events as I can. Um, but even if I can't, I can do pretty much whatever I need to from, from home. Um, also, if all goes as planned, fingers crossed, um, I will be living in New York by the end of this year. Oh. Okay. I mean, okay. And you know, as much as I love Boston, and I do, whoever's listening from Boston, I love <laughs> it. I do. Um, but when it comes to opportunities in the fashion industry, I'm sorry, mm-hmm. but there's no comparison. There's, I'm yeah. sorry. Say it like it is. You know. Um, yeah, so it goes this way. And that's, I guess, that's another question that uh, as people want to know is being in Boston. How were you? So now you've just answered that by saying that, yes, you know, you've had success in Boston and you love Boston, but realistically for your business, you have to, you've made the decision. I mean, you know, I've had the business officially for about three years now. Mm -hmm. And I think as far as Boston, you know, Mm -hmm. I've made a lot. You know, I go to events and I was like, Emma's here. I mean, which is wonderful. Love that. I mean, that, you know, I love, you know, seeing people that, I've known for three years and I've seen them grow and I've seen them grow and I think it's awesome. You know, it's, it's, I've kind of done what I can here. You know, I've done what I can here and gone as far as Boston will allow. And you know, it's time to move on. I mean, I have no regrets, you know, about living in Boston whatsoever. I'm from Rhode Island originally, if anyone <laughs> Oh, okay. Okay. I've lived in Boston for about nine years. Uh-huh. Um, and, you know, I have no regrets. I really don't. I mean, but it's just, you know, time for the next step. So, when you are looking for a client, or, or how, how does it work? Are you searching for a client, or do people reach out to you? Is it like a both? I mean, both. I mean, it's kind of a variety. There's no set way. Um, I get referrals from other people, which is wonderful. That's my favorite when I hear, oh, my gosh, I got it. You know, I heard from so-and-so that you're amazing. I'm like, oh. You know, <laughs> again, that unpaid solicitation really makes it all the difference in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, so that is awesome when I ever, whenever I get that. Um, I always do online networking. It's awesome. For example, if I have an event coming up, I try to you know, learn who the key players are at the events, the designers, the models, whatever. Um, and I know that at the event, I won't be able to talk to you. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. I do try to network beforehand and say, hey, I just wanted to introduce myself, you know, let you know that I'll be there. And if we don't get a chance to talk, I'd like to set up a time later. Mm-hmm. You know, so networking, networking, and then networking mm-hmm. again. <laughs> you know, in their variety. And then networking. What are some of your favorite uh, designers or, or, or models that you've either worked with or or hope to work with or anything, just kind of educate us on the, uh, the, the, the full figure of fashion. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, designers, oh God, that's a tough one. I put you on the spot. <laughs> that's a tough one. Um, well, actually I do represent, one of my clients is a shoe designer, which of course, everyone 
says. Um, her name is Ask Erica M, or her company's name is Ask Erica M. And not only do her shoes go up to size 14, you can even design your own shoes for a lot less. I mean, like pennies compared to what regular cobblers or whatever, you know, charge. Okay. Um, so we love her shoes. And they're actually really comfortable, too. Um, you have very odd feet for some reason. Like, not only the size 12, but they just... I don't know. I don't do well with shoes a lot of times, so I'm very, very grateful I have her. Um, as far as clothing designers, God. I mean, I love Crystal Fraser. Mm -hmm. Fraser, sorry, Fraser. Um, I love. Let's see. There's so many. It's hard. To <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what we'll do is. Um, I love Matt Ravish, who's actually a lingerie designer. Um, I love. Let's see what you can do is you can go in ahead and uh, what we can do is we can have our list below on the link below I'll list uh, list some designers as well as yeah uh, that's, I'm just I've, there was just so many when it comes to it's just like like naming them I'm like all the time and then the meeting will end and you'll like, 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 like <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, as far as models, I mean, I represent quite a few models. I mean, one is Tina Green, who is actually, interestingly enough, um, she has her embryology degree. I don't know if you know what that is. Oh, no. Embryology is almost like in vitro fertilization, mm -hmm. um, artificial, um, what do they call it, insemination, that sort of thing. So she's actually... She's no dummy. <laughs> she's a really smart woman. Um, you know, she's an amazing model as well. I mean, all of my models, all of my clients, really, they have other things, not just like their modeling or their designing. Like, for example, another one of my model clients is Jennifer Lynn Brandt. Um, mm -hmm. She is a, um, also a retired vet from the, from oh. the Army. Oh, I mean, okay. From the Army? Yeah, it's like, this yeah. girl is tough. You know, this is a tough thing. <laughs> um, but she also, you know, is just super change about I mean she can do any kind of modeling whatsoever so I just I love working with people like that um, another one of my clients is Ashley Walker who's not only a great model she is a blogger okay. um, she absolutely knows how to express herself and everything is uh, it's called the Miss Be You Do You oh, um, okay. and I do the inf info for that as well so it's really uh, not just a blog but it's kind of like an empowerment movement as well okay. so yeah I mean I, I have quite a few more clients in that I can go on and on yeah. um, but you <laughs> Um, you can see all of my clients, all of our clients on the website. There's on a client. The website. Okay, and I'll put that in the below. Yes. So There's also a in the press tab that I see that I can talk um, that shows some of, not all, because I just don't have the room, but some of the places where I've gotten them in the press. Okay, so, good, so good. So, for good. example, Marie Claire, you can click on Scorch Magazine to actually see. So, say you're a potential client, you're like, hey, let's see what Emma can do, you know, what kind mm -hmm. of thing that I've gotten my clients in the past. Um, yeah. I mean, obviously, it's not like every single press mention because I just don't have the room, mm -hmm. uh, but like the top ones. Yeah, absolutely. And also, of course, you can see our services. And mm -hmm. a lot of people just on that note as well. Um, a lot of people automatically assume, oh, it's going to cost me thousands and thousands of dollars a month for PR. Not necessarily. Mm -hmm. really. Some of my clients, you know, need to do one hour a month, which is 135, mm -hmm. you know, to start with and everything. So even if you don't think you can afford, you know, just call me. We'll, we'll talk about your goals. Even if you're not ready right this second, I want to get to know you better. That way later on when you are ready a few months down the road, you'll be like, okay, I have a plan of action. So I definitely encourage people, whether or not you're ready right the second for PR, mm -hmm. to reach out, to get to know each other. Again, to build that relationship. That is the most important thing. The money's going to come later. Our relationship is the most important thing. Good, good, good. And so what would be your advice for someone? I guess we'll start with first somebody that says, wow, you know what? That's a, that's a great idea. How would I, how would I get into... Uh, modeling now that there is a lot more attention and a lot more respect that's being mm -hmm. reported slowly but surely towards the uh, four-figure fashion industry well i would definitely say do your research mm -hmm. do your research on not only your location like what resources are available to you i mean while yes of course new york and atlanta and everything like that those are the hubs for plus-size fashion it doesn't mean that you won't be successful if you're not there. 
So I just want to put that out there. You know, you'll have more opportunities there, but say you're in another state or whatever, it's not necessarily a deal breaker. Mm -hmm. um, I would definitely see who else is modeling. I mean, again, networking, networking, mm -hmm. networking is so important. One of the one of the things that really helped me, especially in the beginning, was signing up for Google Alerts. You know what Google mm -hmm. Alerts is? Uh, yes, yes, I have Google Okay, Alerts. so I'm just explaining that to your viewers that <laughs> yes, don't. For the audience. Yes. So Google Alerts is a free service, completely free, um, that gives you news updates of keywords based on keywords. So if you look up Google Alerts, you can get news updates either every day, once a week, whatever, on certain keywords. So it'd be plus size fashion, curvy fashion, plus size modeling, you know, whatever applies to you. Mm -hmm. So not only do you see what's going on in the industry, you see the key players. So again, network, you reach out to them, you send them a friend request on Facebook, you introduce yourself. And one thing I would really, really emphasize as well, whether you're a model, designer, whatever, starting out, do not approach this with the idea of getting a job or making a sale. Mm. That's going to come later. The most important thing is to build relationships. And that really I mean, you will get there, you know, the money is going to come later, but you have to be patient. Again, building that relationship, think long term. Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. Good. This is this is all excellent advice. So I'm looking at <laughs> the, these uh, questions and what and what keeps you going? And <laughs> because you know it it can be very very um, discouraging, especially oh God, yes. <laughs> when you know you're dealing with an industry that is just judging you every and on the way that. Oh. And you know, every person has an insecurity about the way that somebody. You know? I don't care if you're size zero or size thirty-two. You are insecure. <laughs> you know, about something, whether it's your body, your life, whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, what keeps me going is the reinforcement that I get. Cause I mean, I'm about three years into the business now. I mean, there were times when I, I was hardly bringing in any money. I'm like up late, up early. You know, I was just like, why am I doing this? Is this even worth it? And then I get things, uh, this one person said to me, I'll never forget. And it was so such a casual comment, but it just made my day. Mm -hmm. Whenever I want to know something about the plus size fashion industry, I go to your Facebook page. Oh, really? 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 <laughs> little things like that, just like, okay, yes. You know, I, you know, I am doing something that's needed, that's worthwhile. And, you know, again, when I go to these events and, oh, oh Emma's here. Oh, I've been waiting for you. Like, and that takes time. You know, that's not going to happen in the beginning. That's not going to happen. You have to build, again, relationships, your credibility and your value. It just, but those kind of reinforcements are really what makes it worthwhile. Because, I mean, you do get discouraged. I think anyone who owns their own business or is doing freelance or whatever, who says, oh, no, I never get discouraged, you are lying your butt off. <laughs> Sorry, you are lying your butt off. You are deceiving yourself. Everybody gets discouraged. Everybody questions. But you know what? It's not – a lot of people – give up because they're like, oh, if I question myself, that means I'm failing. Mm -hmm. no, absolutely, positively not. If anything, it's important to question yourself. Mm -hmm. Not obsessively, you know, not obsessively. Trust yourself. <laughs> yeah, don't tear yourself down. <laughs> Once in a while, check in with yourself. Mm -hmm. Check in with yourself, like, is this working? Like, how, whatever I'm doing, is it working? Is it getting me toward my goal? Even if I'm not there yet, is it getting me toward my goal? And if not, okay, it might be time to reevaluate. Let me try this, tweak it, tweak it this way and that way. Um, that's another thing that I do with my clients as well. Every single month, I do a status report. Mm, okay. Status report of everything that I do. So not only do they know, yes, she's doing the work that I'm paying her to do, um, okay. you know, we measure the progress over the months. Like, okay, great. This has been working great. We'll stay with that. Oh, if that didn't work so well, we'll ditch that. Mm -hmm. You know, that's you have to do it. and I find that's really important almost to have a status report for yourself like mm -hmm. in life like every month every week whatever you know kind of like okay where am I now where was I last month mm -hmm. you know you got to give yourself credit for the little accomplishments you know what my husband is uh, I wish I, I could go on and on about my husband Adam he's just absolutely amazing the most supportive husband in the world and so let's take a pause. It makes Thank all the difference in the world. Yes. <laughs> um, and one of the things that he, I remember him saying after the first, 
I don't know, maybe like a year ago, whatever. He's like, will you stop it? I'm like, what, what, what am I doing? He's like, do you know how far you've come in two years? I'm like beating myself. I'm like, oh, I should be in New York now. I should be this, I should do that. He's like, don't you see what you've already done? You know, and I'm so glad that he did because I'm like, yeah, I've come kind of far. <laughs> it's so important to give yourself credit for that because we're always, especially in America, we're always, okay, we're supposed to be better best you know so there's always something better there's always something around the corner there's a okay which is fine but don't forget to mark how far you have come mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know there's nothing wrong with saying yeah i yeah. did a good job not yeah. just oh it was a good job but you know that b word i think kills us i really do <laughs> i really really do because it negates all of the good that we have done mm -hmm. so i should really like gives ourselves a break it's like we're always so super critical about ourselves yes. you know we're always especially women we're always like oh but i could do this better this better. okay fine but what have you done in the last two like how have you progressed in the last two years and when you really think about it i'm like oh yeah i'm not doing too bad you know and you really i think that's important regardless of what industry you're in yeah of course of course and now in modeling you know one thing that i always say that i love about the DC area, and as you probably have seen um, in other cities as well, is that it's just the diversity. You know, yes. the diversity not only in size and shape, but of course, and and you know, you've got people of color, and you know, it's just it, you know, it just reflects society in general. So another question that I got was, uh, you know, um, one of my people said, "I really don't get to see me when I am looking at." adverts or, or anything like that and so you know it, it kind of discourages me a little bit and how what would you say to, to a full foot figured woman of, of color especially who just is just like wow there is representation but there's not a lot of representation i mean any kind of long-term permanent change is going to take time <laughs> so we have come again we're you know, not just focusing on the future. Same thing I was just talking about. What have we done? You know, how far have we come? Mm -hmm. you know, it, it's really important to acknowledge, okay, we may not be exactly where we want to be, but we have come quite far. We have come quite far. And I think for for the magazines, for the people on the flip side of that, it's a balance between showing their customers, their potential customers, right? Mm -hmm. they, want, they want to see themselves, but they almost, they want to see something to aspire to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a big thing in fashion, and for so long, it was like this unattainableness. Like, mm -hmm. okay, supermodel, the reason why she is, they put her there is so you attain, like you aspire to it. Mm -hmm. And if you never reach it, you're still going to try to get to it. Mm -hmm. And in the advertiser's mind, in the designer's mind, oh, you can get closer by wearing our clothes, by wearing that, you know, I mean, it's very mm -hmm. psychological. It's, it's selling the image. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You are selling the dream. You are selling the um, aspiration again. So I think that has really not, not gone away, definitely not gone away, but also gotten to the point where, okay, women want to aspire, but not to an impossible dream. Mm -hmm. And also from a more practical point of view as well, I want to see what this product, this shirt, this dress, whatever is going to look like on me. Oh, yeah, exactly. Um, like, like kind of taking the emotional part about away from it. Mm -hmm. Also from a practical, uh, what do they call it, utilitarian point of view. Yes, I want to see how this is going to fit on my triple D chest. Versus, <laughs> I'm serious. Versus the top of the model. It's not going to fit the same. Mm-hmm. From a practical mm -hmm. point of view, women are being more vocal about that. I want to know how it's going to look on me before I'm plunking down $500 for this dress. Yes. And designers and magazines and everything are trying to compromise. I, I really think that they're trying to compromise between that, you know, giving women what they want to see as far as how they're going to wear it, but also giving them something to aspire to at the same time. Gotcha. And so, lot, I mean, there's a lot of psychology and a lot of, you know, a lot going on behind the scenes, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm quite sure, quite sure. And so now with your clientele, um, do you have uh, do you have male? Uh, uh, yeah, I do. 
Um, I don't have a male model right now, um, but I do have Jose Pagan. He is a incredible photographer. I mean, mm -hmm. to go on and on about him as well. Um, he's really well known. He doesn't just exclusively do plus sizes, but he mm -hmm. also is known for capturing women with curves. Um, and he is on a tour of the entire country right now, actually. Um, so he is bringing his services all across the country. You can go on my website to see um, his links as well. So if you want to see, hey, where is he coming next? Um, so he's bringing his amazing skills to the different cities, again, where women may not be able to get to New York. You know, this is in, you know, Kansas or whatever. Um, but they're still aspiring models that they want to build their portfolio. Yeah. So with the photo tour, you can book an hour of his time and you can change as many times as you want. You can do as many outfits as you want. So you're, it's almost like a, a speed dating, you know, for fashion, <laughs> for modeling. Um, and it's for a lot less than you would normally pay for a photo shoot. Because, I mean, for modeling and for designing and for everything, there is investments. Mm -hmm. There are going to be investments. You do have to, I mean, invest wisely, of course. Mm -hmm. But be prepared to, you know, spend a little bit and, you know, to be smart about it. But definitely be prepared to spend a little bit. There are things like this photo tour that allow you to do things less expensively. So I strongly recommend that. Okay, all right. And then now coming from my perspective, you know, uh, my sisters are a lot more voluptuous than I am. They have been blessed with the, what I have not been blessed with. <laughs> and the thing is, is that from my perspective, I can just go to the store, throw on something, walk out. Whereas for them, it's be nice. go through a whole dog and pony show, they've got to go online, they've got to, sit, you know, and so that can be very, very, of course, it's frustrating, but it's also very, very discouraging. And mm. for women who are, you know, who are more voluptuous, who are blessed, and, you know, <laughs> they, but it's not easy for them to find clothing sometimes or all the time because I'm looking at it from an outside perspective. I can't speak for somebody, but just seeing it sometimes it's just frustrating, but then also it can just, it can just hurt when you can just run through and get that cute top, but it's just like, no, I have boobs. I can't wear that. <laughs> I mean, and again, you know, it is changing. It is changing, um, you know, designers and retailers and everything like that. The majority of their plus size clothes, yes, they're still online. I mean, so mm -hmm. many stores I go into and ask if you have full size. Oh, we have a ton of plus sizes. I'm like, great, where are they? They're like, oh, they're <laughs> mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> and the problem with that is that I cannot try them on online. Mm -hmm. And the average plus size woman will return more clothes that she's worn online than the average straight size woman because she doesn't like fit and all of that mm -hmm. fit is the most important thing yeah. i mean yes size charts help i mean i encourage designers and retailers to have size charts okay. but nothing you still need to try it on so <laughs> i really would encourage designers retailers everybody if you have a brick and mortar store please Please, please, please donate a good portion of your store to you know, the size clothes as well i mean it, I think from a practical perspective, if 67% of people in the country are plus size, 67% of the store should be plus size. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> it just makes sense. It just makes so, sense. That's just, yeah. And so, um, people, you brought up a really good point that, you know, you have to do a little bit of investing. Yeah. With time. And one thing that I have discovered is, you know, you have these agencies that will come to you and they'll be like oh, oh. if you pay five hundred dollars a month then you're gonna oh yeah and our person was in this show and that show and you know no 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 no, no, no. what is your what is your advice or what would you say to somebody that's coming to you and they're saying well you know i've been told that i really if they really want you they'll pay you i don't want to fall victim to a scam yes yeah. It, there are lots of scams out there. So again, educate yourself, do the research, talk to successful models, you know, and I also think it's super important to have contracts. You cannot say strongly enough, especially for models, but no matter what you're going to do, have everything written down black and white. And the thing is you don't have to pay 
you know, yes, I think injection is important as well, but there, nine times out of ten, there are less expensive ways to do things. Mm-hmm. So, for example, um, I found this amazing resource. Uh, it's in Boston, but I mean, I'm sure there are other things like it throughout the country called Center for Women in Enterprise. So it's a nonprofit organization that helps women entrepreneurs to build their business. I mean, I'm talking everything, start to finish. It walks you through every step. Financing, they help me find a pro bono, pro bono lawyer. Oh, okay. You mean it. There are so <laughs> many, there are so many resources out there that, you know, look for the nonprofits because again, they're not looking to, you know, grab your money and everything, and they're not looking to like make huge profit and everything like that. Um, so Google nonprofits in your area that help, you know, entrepreneurs or small businesses or whatever phrasing you want to use. Um, and that's really important for models as well. People, model, people, models are like, oh, but I'm not a small business. You are. You are your brain. <laughs> no, seriously, I get this all the time. You know, you need to have contracts, even like a template that you use for every show that you do, every photo shoot that you do, and people will take you more seriously. Mm-hmm. People will absolutely take you more seriously if you say, okay, you want to work with me? Fabulous. I'd love to. Here are my terms. Okay. <laughs> it's so important to do that. It's important about money as well. I mean, a lot of times, especially runway, you will not make a lot of money in runway unless you're Ashley Graham. Sorry, but you're not. So the runway shows are mainly for exposure. But oh. the thing is, I still really encourage people, even if you're not getting paid for runway shows, have a contract spelling out exactly what's expected. And yes, get compensated with clothes with professional pictures, with whatever. Don't just take that word exposure at face value. Ask what kind of exposure. Are you promoting me on social media? Are you doing this? Are you doing that? Get very specific. And if they don't, oh, I don't know, it's just exposure. Okay, thank you very much, but I'll pass. Yeah. So know your worth. It's so important, whatever you're doing in the industry, to know your worth and do the research to back it up. You know, do research on modeling prices in your area, for example, mm-hmm. using the model example. In, if you're in New York, yes, you can charge more than if you're in Alabama, you know, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but know your, know your industry and do the research and get, get the, the proof to back it up. You know, when you go to someone and say, great, here are my rates. Those are your rates. And like, yes, absolutely. And here's the proof. Here's the research that I've done to back it up. Okay, okay. It's really important. I cannot emphasize that strongly enough. Uh, do you and stick to it. And another question that I got was, all right, so here I am. I look like Takara from America's Next Top Model. Love her. I've been connecting with her for a while, absolutely. I'm, I'm doing all of that, but all I see is that Ashley Graham is getting all of the, ex- well, all of the exposure. She's the, the, the model of the moment. Right. What, and, and it discourages me. So what, what would you say to your client that comes to you and just says that, you know, saying, well, I don't see Takara's out there. All I'm seeing is Ashley Graham out there. Well, just so we're clear, are you talking about the color difference, the skincare color difference? Um, just, you know, just, I guess it just kind of circles back to, you know, okay, I look a certain way, but I'm just mm-hmm. seeing that, you know, this this specific look is what's making it right now. And that's mm-hmm. discouraging me. What what would what would they say? Or what would you say to them, to somebody that comes to you and says, Oh you know, you, yeah, I mean basically I would say that if you don't have the look, quote unquote, find a way to capitalize on what you do have. Mm-hmm. If you don't have the hourglass figure, you've got more of a pair figure, just as an example. Okay, well, you know what? There are brands out there and media outlets, whatever. Find the target audience that wants pair shoes. You know, that want that. And then approach them and then really start to build on that and play up your assets. Okay, so you don't have big boots, but you have a big butt. (laughs) I'm serious. So don't Mm -hmm. focus on what you don't have. Mm -hmm. Focus on what you do have and play it up. Okay. All right. Suggestion. You don't, I mean, don't hanker after what you won't have. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not saying don't have a dream, but if your body is significantly different and will never be the Ashley Graham, accept it and enhance it. Like, okay, this is what I am. 
how can I make the most of it? All right. And then I guess because you, you, um, you addressed it as well. I mean, as I said, I'm coming from a perspective. And so I really, really appreciate you answering these because, you know, I, you know, I'm not, my channel, I want it to be as uh, diverse as inclusive of all perspectives. And I really, really enjoy the fact that, you know, when I see my full, full figured models out there, I'm like, yes, because, you know, like you said, it represents most yeah. of the, in, at least in the U S the world. <laughs> and so, but one question I do get as well, as, as you brought up before was that, yeah, you know, I feel as a, black woman or as a Latino woman or anything like that, it will be harder for me to make it. So sh why should I even try? Well, you know, it will be harder. I'm not going to say, you know, oh, of course it has nothing to do with it. Yes, it is a factor. Sorry, but that's the truth, right? It is a factor. But again, you have to accept it. Say, I'm not white. That's okay. So, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, it's not a bad thing by any means if you're not white, obviously, gorgeous skin colors. I mean, one of the, oh, never forget this woman. I was literally like, my jaw was open, oh, my jaw was dropped looking at how gorgeous she was. She has this mocha skin that was just flawless. Oh, anyway. <laughs> um, so what I'm saying is, okay, so you're not white and you're not going to be Ashley Graham. Okay. What about Tyra Banks? Hello. You know, she's a woman of color. I think it's more about not. It's a balance between playing to your ethnicity but not lying solely on it. Okay. You don't want to be so much known as the black girl or the Latino girl. You don't want to be pigeonholed just to that. Mm -hmm. You want to be known as a gorgeous plus size model, period. Mm -hmm. With white whether you're black whether you're hispanic whatever so play up the darker skin if it is one of your best features which it usually is um but don't pigeonhole yourself just to that. okay because then you're going to get people that just want women of color mm -hmm. and just want this and that can be sorry to say but sometimes it can be thought of as a step down and you don't want to do that you want to be i'm a fabulous plus size model who happens to be black yeah. What happens to you? you know, don't let that be, I, that's just my feeling on it. You know, obviously everybody has a different thing on it. But I find as far as success, you don't want that to be your defining factor. You want it to be one of your greatest assets, absolutely, with the skin, but you don't want it to be your defining factor. Your defining factor should be your, you are a fabulous plus size model, period. Not black like that sort of thing. I really think that once people get out of their out of their categories like that, it'll just be fabulous plus model or even fabulous model. Why does it have to be plus size? Right? That's a whole that's a whole another discussion. Um, I think that if we, treat, I, if we stop treating race as a problem, it won't be a problem. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a whole, you know, other kind of in-depth conversation as well, but we're talking about like fashion model, you know, we'll, we'll yeah. so I guess um, then yeah, I think you, you don't treat it as a problem. Model, I guess then what you would just say to a model is, listen, this is something that we are working together to change. That's yes, it is changing. Bad. It is changing. It's getting there. It's going to take more time. But okay. I think in the, having the mentality of it doesn't matter. Race doesn't matter. I'm a fabulous plus size model. Just giving off that vibe will make other people realize, hey, it really doesn't matter. You know? Okay. Why does it have to be a separate category? Yeah. <laughs> and I that, mean, that's, you uh, know, it is, it is a tough area to talk about. It is kind of like mm -hmm. a touchy subject for some people. I mean, some people are very, very much attuned to their ethnicity and everything. I don't want to take that away from you whatsoever. You mm -hmm. know, I've got of ethnicity, ethnicities even in my own family um mm -hmm. my dad is from peru um i have relatives from nigeria i mean all sorts of really i have a ton of people in my family that are different races different colors different whatever um you know just being successful plus size model though i think if you don't think of yourself as different you won't be different in a bad way so i'm saying you know but kind of just like i'm a fabulous again i'm a fabulous plus size model and i just happen to be black Good, and that's that's the message. That's, that's that's with you. Wait a minute. Yeah. Good, 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 good. And 
And so another final, um, getting closer to the final question. So once again, I'm really, really appreciative of you uh, answering this. And what I would love to do is, uh, you know, eventually just, because uh, as I said, I'm coming from a perspective of, I just, I'm just a fashion blogger and everything. I would love to just, you know, maybe do like a, um, a, a Q and A or something with that actual people that are looking to break into the uh, size industry and have like questions like, oh, you know what? I wish you would have asked this question or this question because that's not a struggle that I have or, or the experience that I have. So I'm really hoping that everybody's going to take away from this that, you know what, things are changing, that it's opening up, the industry is opening up, and uh, there are a lot more opportunities. Am I correct in that? Oh, absolutely. I mean, one of my... Uh, I have a couple other of my designer clients. Um, one, her name is Keisha Greaves. Mm -hmm. She is a designer for uh, Girls Chronically Rock. Mm -hmm. She's an inspirational fashion line for people, women and men, who have disabilities, like chronic illness. And that's another thing that's changing. I mean, talking about like people in wheelchairs in fashion shows, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. it's not just about size. Mm -hmm. I love the fact of like embracing, you know, this devastating diagnosis. She's got muscular dystrophy mm -hmm. and yes, you know, limits what she can do in daily life, but it's also gave her this inspiration for an amazing brand. I mean, I'm so proud to represent her. Um, another one of my clients is, I know, oh, I really am. I'm so honored to represent these people and to tell everyone, shout it from the rooftops how amazing they are. Um, another one of my clients is Ashante and she owns Tragic Pleasures. Mm -hmm. so which is actually taking painful past of like domestic abuse and everything like that and bringing it into po a positive light. So oh. her, motto, her motto is like you break it, you buy it or something like that. And it's, it's really talking about, um, you know, broken hearts, but then surviving that, not only surviving, but, you know, thriving from it. So those are the kind of things that I just look for because it's not just about plus sizes. It's about the emotional part of being a human being. Okay. So everybody's gone through heartbreak. Everybody's got, you know, everybody can relate to tragic pleasures. Like, oh my gosh, I remember that first thing. And, you know, those <laughs> besides, besides just beautiful fashion, those are things that everybody can relate to. Oh, you know, and, you know, as far as the girls, yeah. And as far as girls chronically <laughs> rock, while you yourself might not have a chronic illness, chances are you know someone in your life that does. Oh. So it hits the cord with almost everybody. And then, um, Almost last question is just okay. <laughs> a day in the life of Emma. She wakes up, oh. <laughs> she's going to go to work, you've got a client. Kind of just give us a general overview. Of oh, what Lord. <laughs> um, and I know that in this industry, it could be anything in any different day. Anything and everything can happen. There have been times where I start, I, I'm like, okay, I got to go grocery shopping and I end up, you know, finding a new client in line at the grocery store. You never know. <laughs> you never, that's happened. That has actually happened, believe it or not. Um, let's see. I guess a fairly typical day. I mean, I wake up. I usually actually sleep pretty late because the um, fashion industry is a night industry. Mm -hmm. You know, so I do a lot of my work at night, especially social media. And my husband works um, second shift. So um, thanks for, you know, get to see each other when he comes yeah. home. <laughs> um, so I usually wake up around like 12, 1230 ish. Um, yeah, but again, I'm up till, you know, four in the morning, sometimes five, like I was last night. Um, so I wake up, try to spend a little time with my hubby before he goes to work or actually mm -hmm. first I spend time with my kitties because they jump up on the bed and of course demand to be petted and all that good stuff. Yeah. So after my husband goes to work, um, depending on the weather, the weather has a lot to do with it. If it's super hot or really cold or whatever, I'll usually stay home and work from home. But I do try to get out as much as possible because you can just be in your house all the time. Or I can't, I mean. Um, so I usually bring my laptop to like Starbucks or Barnes and Noble, you know, some kind of quiet place like that where I can do work. Um, and so I do that for a few hours. And I do tend to get a lot more done outside the house than I do it at home, that's for sure. I'm sure. Kitties have a lot to do with it. I mean, they just kind of demand cuddles. And I mean, how do you say no to that? Come on. <laughs> um, yeah. So, I mean, usually I do work from roughly like 3 o'clock to maybe nine, ten o'clock at night when my husband gets home. Um, you know, take a little break to spend with him. Um, usually do a little bit more um, after that. 
I mean, the work depends on obviously the client, what the, what the client's you know, goals are and what their projects are working on right now. So that's a pretty typical day. I mean, my weekends, um, I try to go to as many fashion events as I can. Um, this weekend, I'm going to one in Boston. Next week, like I said, I'm going to Full Figure Fashion Week. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, now, I do, this is the yeah. first that I'm hearing about Full Fashion Week. Really? Oh. Looking, at, yes. I was, like I said, you know, I'm coming from a completely different perspective. So, yeah. like myself, who are, you know, just like, okay, sometimes just kind of focus on, you know, just the, the stick thin models, you know, that, that permeate everywhere. And then so I was like, you know what? I'm interviewing a PR person for full. And so I Googled, I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Like a fashion week. Shame on Yeah. No, Full Figured Fashion Week, this is the 10th year, believe it or not, um, was created by Gwen DeVoe of DeVoe Productions, I believe the name is her, mm-hmm. uh, her event production agency. Um, it, God, I, I can't say enough about it. I mean, not only fashion shows, both women and men, um, mm-hmm. network opportunities, shopping, oh, major shopping. Yeah, rent is pretty much going to go out the window, that's good. Uh, yeah, lots of shopping. I mean, just net support. I mean, building up confidence for the curvy women and men. Like, that's the whole week of that positivity. It's wonderful. It's absolutely amazing. Um, you know, so that's happening every year. From now on, until you know, Gwen dies and maybe her, you know, and they will take over. Who knows? <laughs> um, <laughs> Gwen does an amazing job making sure all of the uh, events are professional because um, that's very lacking in the industry fashion industry in general, not just plus size industry, professionalism, I have to say. Um, so in general, I really tend to go to professional events and when, of course, makes it happen. Um, so Full Figure Fashion Week is happening this coming, this coming Monday the 18th through Sunday the 24th in New York City. Um, so if anyone wants to go, it's ffsweek.com. You can see all the events, all the people, you can learn about Gwen. Um, next month in New Orleans oh. is going to be Essence of Curve, so I'm excited about that as well. That I believe is two days. It's not a whole week, but I believe it, it's two days, so kind of like a mini version of that. And then in August, I'm going to Atlanta for the first time, Atlanta, Georgia, for the Curvy Fashionista Style Expo. Oh, okay. It's a really big deal because Atlanta, Georgia, it's huge for plus size opportunities. Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 Not looking forward to the heat. I told Marie, who is the Curvy Fashionista blogger, I said, you better have good air conditioning down there. I am not looking forward to the heat in August. I'll, I'll suck it up for you guys. I will suck it up. Um, so also, I mean, pretty much every, I don't want to say every single month, but every season, there's like a major thing going on in the plus size industry. Um, September is Curvy Con. Mm-hmm. So you've heard of like Comic Con and that sort of thing. So it's Curvy Con, um, <laughs> and that is during New York Fashion Week. So I was really glad that they timed it for that, because um, that way, if you're there anyway for New York Fashion Week, hey, you got the Curvy Con part of it. Um, so I definitely encourage, you know, again, networking. I've said this throughout the entire interview, but networking is the name of the game. Try to go to as many of these events as possible. You know, Google Curvy Con or Full Figured Fashion Week and the Curvy Fashion Week, the Style Expo. Um, these were in July, instance of curves. These are all things that are going to help you reach your goals. I mean, yes, it's an expense. I mean, if you don't live in the area, obviously, mm-hmm. um, it's a travel expense and whatever, but it is an investment. You know, it's so important to look at it as an investment. And don't forget, if this is your business, this is all tax deductible stuff, too. Oh, so this is a side note. I learned something from my account, and I'm like, really? She's like, yeah. And believe me, when you're paying your own taxes, it makes a difference. <laughs> And you can a little five, you know, if you go if you go to a, a Starbucks for coffee with a client, that's tax deductible. Those little five dollar bills they add up. Trust me, <laughs> to give your receipts. Yes. <laughs> so, I just wanted to thank you so. Oh, thank you. Yes. You educated me, and hopefully everyone that's gonna watch this just uh, on an, on an industry that is growing and I'm very happy to hear about that but really should not have to be a growing industry because I mean like you said 60% hello there. well you know it, it, the market is the majority of people in, mm-hmm. the, in, in the US and I think the world if I'm not mistaken um, the industry itself is mm-hmm. still small mm-hmm. you know it's growing again it is growing any kind of long-term 
fundamental change is going to take time. And I'm so blessed and glad that I launched Madeira's Fashion PR when I did, because I think if I launched it even 10 years ago, it wouldn't have been as successful. And I think, you know what, I think a big part of the success of the plus size industry, just a little side note, is the overall movement in this country and the world of acceptance, acceptance and positivity, not just about your size, mm-hmm. about the race, about your um, political, about you know your gender, the transgender rights, and everything like that. I think all of that put together, mm-hmm. you know, all of just the overall air of acceptance, if you would, for lack of a better term, um, the movement of acceptance is benefiting everything, is benefiting size, is benefiting race, is benefiting gender. Like, it's all one. I really believe that. You know, I really believe that, you know. So, So, in in other words, like, Oh, I'm sorry. I was just going to say, like, in other words, gay rights and Black Lives Matter and all of that, you know, while, yes, it is empowering those specific groups, it's also helping all of the groups. Mm-hmm. Because the mentality of okay, you know what we shouldn't we shouldn't judge people based on race or um, gender or size or whatever mm-hmm. because it's all one. It really is like just the, the value of acceptance, acceptance, no matter what. That is so beautiful, and you know what? I can't even say anything after that. Because <laughs> I know, you know, I, I feel great. I hope that after watching this, that you guys feel great. And I just want you to just leave in the comments and everything when you would like to go on ahead and have uh, whenever I'm as available to do like a, a another follow up and, and I'd love to do like a Q. I'd love to do a Q A. Yeah, when people can chime in and say, "Hey, ask Emma, ask Emma questions," yeah. ask, you know, like yeah. all the yeah, I would really love to do that. We we should set that up. I think we should do that since. Um, Maybe like right after Full Figured Fashion Week, oh, yeah, when it's coming back home and everything like that. I think it would be the perfect time, mm-hmm. um, like, a, hey, get your PR questions answered. And that's what I definitely will do that because oh, thank you. I have a certain perspective, but I would want people that you're looking to represent and get services out to, to chime in and also find out yeah. information about it. I think that would be fantastic. And All right. Thank you so much. I yeah. Really, really appreciate you taking the time out. This was so much fun. Oh, you're so sorry. Glitch it earlier. Is. I'm glad that we did. <laughs> thank you so much. And I, I, I really hope, you know, your viewers take more away than just like PR tips. I really do. <laughs> and I hope they kind of, you know, I, no, I really hope that they take away more than that. I, I hope they take away more, especially if they are trying to look into getting into the industry, like mm-hmm. what I said about knowing your worth and knowing your value mm-hmm. and it's just so important, especially in the beginning, because like, oh, well, you know, I'm kind of in the beginning, so, mm-hmm. you know, maybe I shouldn't get paid, or maybe I shouldn't get paid. Like, no, you are providing a service. Mm-hmm. There's nothing wrong with getting paid for it. Okay, you may not make as much as Ashley Graham, but yes, you should definitely get compensated in some way, super form. Oh, man. And so, yes, finally, just uh, what would, what do you hope to see yourself find? Ten years from now, you know, what, what would you like for for yourself, for your business profession, and then for just the uh, full figure industry as a whole? What would what would you like to? Yeah. Where it's going? Well, definitely, you know, I, you know, moving to New York is a huge thing because it will help to grow the business, be more able to go to all the events and everything like that. So that's definitely, hopefully, before five years, hopefully this year, <laughs> um, really be. I mean, I'm kind of already looked at as the go-to girl for plus size PR, but I really want to get to the point where a journalist is going to see an email from Madeira's fashion PR and open it up no matter what, because Emma knows what she's talking about. So that's definitely my long-term goal. Cause keep in mind, journalists, I, I mean, I'm sure, you know, kind of being in the media, journalists get hundreds of emails every day. One of my, oh my gosh, it's insane. One of my contacts at Glamour, she said, on average, she gets 400 emails a day. I, I, I couldn't even imagine. I, I couldn't wrap my head around that. So I want to get to the point where any journalist is going to see an email from Adiro's Fashion PR and know immediately, open it up. Emma knows what's newsworthy. Emma knows what I write about. Open it up. There you go. I got a story. So that's kind of like my long-term goal. And I'm, I'm getting there, you know, definitely getting there. I mean, obviously, I need to get... Um, you know, it takes time to know everybody, um, but it's definitely getting there. You know, it's really nice to hear that, you know, people understand that I know what's newsworthy. 
and I'm not going to waste your time with okay. something that's not newsworthy. All right, Emma Trophy, thanks again. So that uh, the the next Takara, the next Ashley Graham is out there, and they can go ahead and get in touch with you. Yeah, and again, bottom line is know what makes you so effing special. <laughs> It really is. That's so important for everybody, no matter what industry you're in. It's so important to know, kind of like do a self-evaluation. What makes me so effing special? Why is someone going to hire me versus the 10,000 other models waiting in line at the casting call? You have to know about yourself before you can tell someone who wants to hire you. You have to know for sure and do the research. Yes, I'm the only one doing this or I'm the only one doing it this way or whatever applies to you. What makes you so effing special? That, you know, that one, that one question really changed my life. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much. Right. Thank you so much.